So we've already talked a little bit about these inverses of trig functions, but it's a very important idea. I just want to emphasize it. For example, if I had inverse sine, let's think about what these inverses do. Um, inverse sine, this is true of any of these inverse inverse functions, inverse trig functions as a function, <laughs> like my dot on my eye. Um, inverse sine, it's going to take in a ratio and spit out an angle. Sine is about height, so on the unit circle, it's going to talk about these heights, these y values. These are the inputs. These are the things that get input, and the thing it's going to tell me is the is the angle or the rotation. And that's true for inverse cosine, inverse tangent. All of these inverse functions do this. They undo um, their their corresponding functions. Uh, inverse sine of root two over two. That's the height of root two over two, right? Sine's related to y. So that would be this value right here. And remember, inverse sine is a little quirky. It wouldn't repeat, it would not give me 315 degrees. It's this angle here from zero. So think about that symmetry there. It's negative 45 degrees. So that would give me a negative 45 degrees. So let's think about some of the things. Uh, so for example, if I talk about inverse sine, and then I could talk about what's what's called its its domain, and the domain are the possible inputs. What are the legitimate things that I can plug into inverse sine or arc sine? And um, basically, what I'm asking is, what are possible ratios for that sine would spit out? And if you'll notice, like the biggest ratio that sine handles is one. So inverse sine, its domain goes from negative one to one. And if I write this this way in the sit notation, that hard bracket, th this just means the range from negative one to one, and the hard bracket means it includes those values. This is like saying negative one is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to one. So that means negative one is, is part of the possibility. And cosine, inverse cosine, the domain, it's the same thing. Notice that uh, cosine is about width. It goes from one back to negative one, but it's never never larger than that. So the inputs for inverse cosine are negative one to one. What this means is if I try to put something into, like, like let's say I go inverse cosine of two. Notice what this is asking is like, what angle, because the output's the angle, would output this ratio of, of two? Um, in other words, inverse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse equals two. That would mean that like a is bigger than h. That would mean like this was two and this was one, which can't happen in a right triangle um, in flat space. <laughs> so there we go. Now tangent is, uh, if I think about its inputs, tangent, what it's going to take in, tangent is, is slope, tangent steepness. So like if I think about tangent of this right here, it's over a little bit, up a lot. Tangent can get as big as I want it to be. So my, my inputs for tangent are, are anything. Um, we could say this, which means any real number. It's just an R with like a double bar. Um, so a tangent can take in any value that it wants. So now let's talk about the range of each of these functions, or in other words, the outputs. What will they spit out? And if I think about sine, I know that sine is bounded in here, in this region right here. So sine will spit out values from, and it's not three pi over two, it's negative pi over two, from negative pi over two to pi over two. Or, or you know, that's the same as negative 90 to 90, if you're in degrees. Cosine, on the other hand, cosine is bounded here. So notice cosine goes from zero out to pi. So cosine will spit out zero, uh, values from zero to pi. And then tangent um, has the same bound as, as arc sine, as inverse sine. It'll return values negative pi over two to pi over two. And that's just what they do as the functions. That's how they're defined. So inverse sine, inverse tangent, and then this one is inverse cosine. And that's what they'll spit out. 
Now that's kind of interesting, this difference between sine and cosine. Notice what that tells me is cosine will spit out anything from zero to pi or, or zero to 180 degrees inclusive. So that means that inverse cosine will spit out obtuse angles, right? Angles bigger than 90 degrees. So that's kind of cool. It won't spit out anything bigger than 180, but it will give me some obtuse angles. Arc sine, inverse sine will not. It will only go from negative 90 to 90. So arc sine doesn't handle obtuse angles well. Um, it, and cosine doesn't handle anything bigger than 180, but that's okay. We can, we can, we can deal with it. But anyways, that's one thing to, to hold on to. Just a couple values I want us to find here. Arc cosine or inverse cosine of negative root three over two. Cosine is about width. Cosine is about the, those x values. So our input is going to be an x value, negative root three over two. Our output is going to be the associated angle. And if we put it in degrees, that would be five pi over six. I'm sorry, if we put it in radians, that would be five pi over six. Or if we put it in degrees, that would be 150 degrees. Um, arc sine of negative root three over two. Now sine's about height, sine's about y. So negative root three over two is here. Notice it's here, this 300 degrees or five pi over three, but arc sine is not gonna spit out that, that 300 degrees. So if I think about 300 degrees, this is 60 degrees up to zero from there. Or I can just kind of take that symmetry and go, it's negative this. So negative pi over three, or negative 60 degrees, depending on if I was in radians or if I was in degrees. Inverse tangent, arc tangent of negative root three over three. All right, let's think about this one for a sec. Um, so arc tan, tangent is sine over cosine or y over x. So notice in this case, my y value is negative root three and my x value is, is three. So first off, I know it's negative, so I know it's going to be going, going downward. Now let me let me think about this. There's only two possibilities that have a root three in them: this one and this one. So let me look at this this 300 degrees or this negative 60 degrees first. If I go y over x on here, this would be negative root three over two over one half. And notice if I do that, the, the one halves cancel and it just becomes negative root three, which is not that. That's not equivalent to that. This is something where that denominator has been rationalized. So let me look at the, the other possibility, which would be this one, this negative 30 degrees. So if I think about this would be negative one half over root three over two, the one halves divide out. So it's negative one over root three. And notice that now if I rationalize the denominator here, negative root three over three, I get that. So um, this one must be a negative 30 degrees, which is the same as if you look at the symmetry here, negative pi over six. One little note about this, I just kind of flippantly said the one halves cancel out. If you want to think about it this way, this is negative one half divided by root three over two. When you divide by a fraction, uh, you, you multiply by the reciprocal. So negative one half times this thing flipped, two over root three. The twos cancel out, negative one over root three. Uh, what I'd like to do is try and find these values now. So arc sine of a, a 0.71. So that means that, you know, I'm gonna have some angle and the opposite divided by the hypotenuse is gonna be 0.71. So it could be that, that this is 0.71 and this is one. Or it could be that this is 7.1 and that's 10. Or this is 71 and that's 100. Like any ratio would work, but it would all be the same angle because it would just be blown up versions of that. So I'm looking for that angle. Um, I don't have a 0.71 location on my unit circle. So I'm not going to just look it up. Let me use a calculator. So let's see what I got here. Um, I'll do it both in degrees and radians just to see what happens. 
So turn it on. Uh, turn it on mode. Uh, so right now I'm in radians. So let's see if I go uh, sine and not sine, arc sine, inverse sine of 0.71. In radians, I get this about 0.78. Nine and it, you know typically if if it doesn't give you directions go out three decimal places. Now I'll do it in degrees. Again, arc sine just second and then sine. It's right up on the board there, a point seven one, and it's about forty five point two three five degrees. So depending on if I was in working in radians or if I was working in degrees, I would give these answers. And I might say they don't exactly equal them. These are approximations, right? Because I had to round. All right, let me do the th same thing with inverse tangent of 2. So inverse tangent of 2. In degrees, that gives me 63.435. And if I do the same thing in radians, I get about 1.107. So my radians was about 1.107. My degrees, about 63.435. And again, approximately. And let's think about what this means, that tangents 2 means I have some angle. If I go this divided by this, it's 2. So like this could be 2 and this could be 1. Or, you know, it could be an infinite possibilities, right? As long as this is twice as big as that. If that's 10, that's 5. But anyways, in order to make that happen, I would need about a 63 degree angle or about a one, about 1.1 1 .1 radians. It's really nice to think about what this means instead of, instead of just pushing buttons, maybe in addition to pushing buttons on your calculator. Uh, so let's take a look at this inverse cosine of three. I hope that that makes you a little uncomfortable right off the bat. If it doesn't, inverse cosine of three, domain error. I get an error on my calculator. Why did that happen? Well, let's think about what this means. Uh, a cosine of three, if that's my angle, whatever it is, Remember, at cosine, we can think of it as adjacent over hypotenuse, or the x direction, the width over the hypotenuse. So if that's 3, that's 1. Like, try to draw that to scale. If that's actually 3 long, this is only 1 long. That You can't make a, a triangle from that. So this is, a, this, is a, this is an impossible triangle, this idea that the cosine uh, would equal 3. So inverse cosine of 3, no solution. So let's use what we're doing to actually uh, start to do what's called, called uh, solving triangles or solving pieces of triangles. If I was solving this whole triangle, I would be finding every missing side and every uh, missing angle. But I'm not. I'm just going to find this, this angle. I'm just going to find this theta right now. So I have to think about the relationship between the theta and what I know. So notice here's my angle. And I have this, which is opposite. And this, which is hypotenuse, and I really should have had that in there showing you it was a right triangle. Because if it was not a right triangle, there's not much I can do at this point. So notice that, uh, again, I have um, opposite and I have hypotenuse. Or you could also say I have a Y up, down, and I have R. But either way, thinking about that, um, this points me towards sine. Right, sine is opposite over, over hypotenuse. So I know that if I were to go sine of this angle, it would spit out opposite over hypotenuse. So if I was using sine, if I plugged in the angle, it would give me this one fifth. Uh, but I want to know that angle. So now what I can use is I can use that arc sine. I can use the inverse of it. The thing that undoes sine is is inverse sine. So if I go, if I were to go inverse sine of the ratio. I could be writing it as one fifth right now, but just leave it as, as 10 fiftieths. That should spit out, I'll put it on this side, the angle. So inverse sine of 10 fiftieths should give me the angle. Well, let me do that on my calculator. So arc sine of, and again, if you want to do one fifth here, do it. Um, I'm just going to do 10 fiftieths just so it 
matches straight back to the problem. There's my answer in radians. I'm going to do this one in degrees um, just because typically when we're dealing with just triangles, not, not spots in space, we usually do it in degrees. About 11.537. So this angle here would be about 12 degrees, 11, 12 degrees. It pretty much makes sense to me. This is 10. This is not very tall. This is pretty wide. You know, so it's not going to have to uh, swing out too big of an area to, to cover that 10 if this distance is 50. Let's do another one. So there's theta. And I notice I have adjacent and hypotenuse. So as I gather up the pieces that I have, adjacent and hypotenuse, that makes me think about cosine. You know, or I could think about this as x and r. Still cosine. So cosine of theta, if I were to go cosine of theta, it should spit out adjacent over hypotenuse. Whoops, <laughs> 6 40ths, which is the same as 3 20ths if you want to reduce it right away. So um, that means that I know the ratio, I want to know the angle. So how about I use inverse cosine and just shove that in my calculator. So inverse cosine of 6 40ths, not 70, 40, about 81.373. So notice how using these inverse signs, now all of a sudden we can go from ratio to angle. Whereas before, we've been going strictly angle to ratio. Do one more. There's my angle, and it looks like I have opposite and adjacent. Or I could say uh, x and y. Although in this case, that would be the y relative to that, and that would be the x. But that's all right. Um, this points me towards tangent. So I know if I were to go tangent of the angle, it would spit out the ratio opposite over adjacent. So if I'm going to undo that, I'm going to use arc tangent, inverse tangent. Shove that into my calculator. 21.801. And again, it's not exactly equal, so I'm going to use that approximately equal sign, kind of that flaky little equal sign wavy. So there's some ways we can just uh, use these to solve solve some triangles. Um, and not really, I'm not really solving the whole triangle. If it asked me to, again, what I would have to do is I would have, also have to find this angle and this uh, side length. I could use Pythagorean theorem for that. I could sum of 180s for these, etc. So I do want to make a little bit of distinction. In the co last couple of problems, we had some context about how big theta could be, about how big that angle could be. Notice if I just start from here, I know that sine theta is equal to 0.4. Um, let me think about what that means. I have some angle, and if this is 1, it means this height right here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, is 0.4. Now if I was looking for all the possibilities, all the possible thetas, there's actually another angle, if I think again, uh, if I think about this height of 0.4, I could actually do a rotation all the way to here as well with an angle of 1. This is a different angle, which also has this height of 0.4. So remember sine only gives us angles from here to here. So if I go arc sine of 0.4, on my calculator right now, Me about 23.578 uh, degrees. That tells me what this angle right here is, uh, 23.573 degrees. But if I were looking for all the possible things that theta could be, one of them is that. But the other one would be, I need to figure out what this is. This would be that same angle, that 23.573. So notice the whole rotation. In other words, if I do this, is 180. So it would be 180 minus whatever that is. 
go 180 minus the answer. That's 156 about degrees. 422. And so that would actually be both of those possibilities. Uh, similarly, if I wanted to find that uh, cosine of theta is 0.4, if I think about this one, it's a width of 0.4. Like this rotation right here, when this is 1, that would give me that. This is the answer that my, my calculator is going to give me. But with cosine, there's another angle too that would give me that same width of 0.4. So I would go um, inverse cosine of 0.4, get whatever that answer is. That would be one of my answers. And then in this case, uh, the way that I'm going to make up for it, notice, is this is 360 degrees, and this would be negative that rotation. So then I would go 360 minus whatever that is to get my other possibility. We'll talk more about this idea um, in later chapter, but I want to make sure that we know that when we're inverse cosigning, it's only giving us one possible answer. I love these problems, these types of problems. It really gets at what cosine, arc sine, arc cosine mean. They're great questions. Uh, so we're going to try and find cosine of the inverse sine of three fifths, and we want the exact value. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to draw a picture for this. So if I think about arc sine is three fifths. So I know that sine is uh, height over hypotenuse or y over r or opposite over hypotenuse. So if I had some, some angle, this angle right here, um, that angle would return, that angle would have a height of three and a radius of five. Or I could say a height of three fifths, a radius of one, same thing. I'm just scaling it. So now if I go cosine of whatever this angle is, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have to figure out what this side is. So let me use Pythagorean theorem for that. I'll call it X equals five squared. So nine plus X squared is 25, subtract nine. So X is four. So notice this width must be four if that's three. So cosine of the angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Let me do one more like this. The sine of the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths. So notice that the direction is important here. So if I think about inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths, that would be my, my theta, my angle. Uh, cosine is, is width over hypotenuse, or x over r, um, or adjacent over hypotenuse. Either way, notice that this distance right here is negative 5, and that's a 13. And then there's my angle right there. So as I sketch this, I have to pay attention to my direction. And now if I were to go sine of that angle, it would be height over hypotenuse, or y over r, or opposite over the hypotenuse. So I just have to figure out what that is. So I'll use Pythagorean theorem for it. So negative five squared plus y squared is 13 squared. Uh, 13 squared is 169. Negative five squared is positive 25. You know, when you do this in your calculator, make sure you enter it this way. Don't enter it in that way. That'll give you a negative 25. The square is being, uh, the negative is being squared as well. Uh, subtract 25 from both sides. Y squared is 144. So Y must be 12. So this height is 12. So sine of that angle would be 12 thirteenths. Again, I really like these problems. I think they just do a really good job of showing understanding um, sine, cosine, arc, cosine, and the position um, with these rotations. If you have any questions as you're trying the problems, post uh, questions in the forums, message me. Have fun with it.